Ben, uh, Kevin Byers did his Zoom driving down the car, driving down the street in his car. We were hoping you were going to be on a tractor or bush hog or something like that today to start this thing off. But <laughs> looks like looks, looks like you're at the facility. Uh, I, I guess Derek's gone for over a hundred uh, five straight now. Uh, leads the league in rushing. Uh, what what's going well there? Maybe as a group, what 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 maybe are you guys focused on to be even better going down the you know second half of the season? Yeah, um, we got to clean some stuff up on combinations and stuff like that as an offensive line. But um, he's running hard. Um, when, when he's getting his opportunities, he's making the most of it. He's making guys miss. Um, he's he's finishing runs hard. He's making the one to two yard runs turn into four and five. So you got to give him credit too. He's a guy. Um, if we do our part, he's special. And Derek, um, you can tell he wants it. And when he has the ball in his hands, any play is special when he has it. Uh, Teresa? Ben, what seems to be happening after halftime? I mean, I think there were five penalties in the second half. I'm not saying that they're all on the offense, of course, but uh, you get a run, then there's a flag, seems to be wiping some things out, uh, kind of, you know, leading to some three and outs. Uh, how challenging is it maybe to come out of halftime and, and execute as cleanly as you guys were in the first half? Yeah, we got to be better, and we know that that's what, that really haunted us in the second half is penalties and getting behind on the chains and we're not able to execute like we want to and get into the, the groove um, running the ball like that. When you put yourself behind on the sticks, um, it makes a hard living for the style of ball we're playing right now. And that's what kills our drives right now. We got to have confidence and you can't make, make, make an effort to have your guy as yourself and you can't have that penalty to hurt a drive. Uh, John Glenn. Hey, Ben, um, you guys are, are obviously such a, a, a run-heavy team, which kind of goes against the green of, of a lot of teams in the NFL. Do, do you think that makes a, um, a challenge sometimes uh, for defenses simply that you guys are, are uh, so different, um, you know, and, and obviously also the fact that you have a guy like Derrick Henry so is different, so is so different as well. Does that represent a change and a challenge for, for defenses, do you think? I think they know what they're getting with us. Um, it's a style of play that we – we play good defense here and, and like to run the ball. It's it's how we're built here. It's how they built our team. And I don't know if it's a challenge for other teams because they know what we're doing or anything, but I know watching tape, and, um, you have to really focus on teams that really run the ball because I feel like teams play us different. We get different from what other teams are getting. So it's not as much film out there to watch, but we know we love to run the ball here. And you have a guy like um, Derek in the backfield um, we want to run the ball, and that's an offensive lineman. Anytime we can call a run, it's a it's a plus in our favor. Uh, Tron, Ben, obviously, you know, coming into this this season, you knew that Derek was going to get back to himself. But actually, after you know a couple games, it seemed to really kick in the gear. Was there a point like, can you put your finger on a point where it was like, yeah, that's that guy that, that we usually have in the backfield? Yeah, um, the guy cares. Um, I know after the first two weeks, um, just watching tape with him, he's so critical about his run, his run track, um, where his cut's going to be, um, how we're blocking certain plays, and I'm happy for for him to come alive. And I know just seeing how he ran the ball versus the Raiders and his mindset, um, like one guy wasn't going to tackle him at the line of scrimmage. He was making guys miss. He was making those ugly one yard runs turn into three and four. And when you're turning out three and four yard runs, it's a lot easier to call the run on second and eight, first and 10, because you know you're going to get three or four yards when you hand it to him. Uh, Jim Wyatt. Ben, ben what is uh, Malik like in the huddle? And maybe where did you see improvement from him from, uh, from first start to second? Yeah, just the operation. He was cleaner, just getting the play in. Um, the more he does it, the more he understands the offense. And I would say that was the biggest change, just him actually executing the huddle and getting the play in and out so we can execute it in the line of scrimmage. Uh, John Glenn. Yeah, Ben, maybe a similar question to that. I wonder, uh, is it pretty much the same situation for you, whether you're centering a, a rookie or, or a 10-year vet, or, or, you know, if not, what are – what are maybe some sort of subtle differences or changes that you have to make as a as a center? Yeah, um, just from our checks and cans, um, 
I make sure I know everything that what it, what it entails the coverage and everything like that to make sure we're in the right play. Um, when Tannehill, I know he knows the cans like the back of his hand. So I'm able to anticipate a little quicker and not have to say like, hey, can it? But that's part of it. I'm, I'm doing the same thing when Tannehill's in there because once the cans happen, I'm, I have to make my call. So it's just maybe, hey, doing the can and doing it. So I enjoy it. Um, the run game, I really have a passion for the X's and O's side of the game. So not much different, um, just who's behind me and just which depends on who's back there in the huddle. Can, can you just, for, for a dummy like myself, can you just elaborate a little bit on, on like what a can is? Yeah, we'll call two plays at once. And depends on what the defense gets us. Um, we put it, try to get ourselves in the best play possible. Thanks. Uh, Jim? Jim, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Um, ben, I guess obviously a tough one on Sunday, one that could linger. I mean, how, how important is it for you guys to to turn the page on this one with two games uh, coming up here in, in about nine days? Right. Um, that's what Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is put this game to bed, um, make the corrections, and you can't let it carry over. Um, we know we got a lot of football ahead of us, and um, it's important football right now in November to separate from um, our division. So we know we got to take care of business and we can't let, let this one carry over. Uh, our defense played so well and we got to go out there and help them this week and take some plays off of them. And uh, it's funny, it trying to get me that one to ask you about. I was just asking uh, Kevin Byard what he uh, listens to driving in his car, what, what do you listen to pregame? Do you listen to pregame music or what's your kind of music ritual? Uh, pregame, if I was a home game, it's a truck. And uh, if I'm driving, uh, it's usually a country song. Um, if it's in the stadium uh, um, on Sundays, I uh, listen to worship music. And and one more for me. Oh, I don't know if you know, have you ever met Jeff Saturday? And uh, if so, or if not, what do you think about a center being a, a head coach? You think he's a, a center makes a good candidate for head coach? Could you see that in your future one day? Uh, I grew up watching Jeff Saturday and tried to um, the relationship him and um, Peyton had together and the passion they played with. Um, so I know I love watching him growing up. And a guy when I first got in the league, he was on the tail end of his career. So getting to watch him that way, um, happy for him to get an opportunity and hope for the best. But he's in our division, so you know how that rolls. We want to lose every game. What about a center? Smart, pretty, pretty smart guys. But probably as a center, uh, I haven't really talked to him in person. Um, hopefully, uh, I know being in that offense with Peyton, um, there he's he's run their scheme, so he's played for a long time. So my take, well, I, I would guess he would be pretty smart. Uh, Teresa. I'm just going to follow up on Sunday's worship music. Who's is it? What who's in the playlist? Do you have a favorite artist? Uh, I like Zach Williams. Um, um, North Point's Church in Atlanta. I like Deliverer that song. Um, uh, the Anchor by Crowder. So it depends on what mood I'm in. But Crowder, North Point Church, and Zach Williams usually.